That's great. It starts with an earthquake. Pies and cakes and tardigrades. Sentence breaks are seldom made. Try to nuke a hurricane. Watch the Amazon burn. Hell's an endless news feed. YouTube morning routines. Suck in your gut. SpaghettiOs hens. Then in Laura Ingalls Wilder with a hoop skirt. Hup skirt. Concertina wire. Cougar cubs. Ohio days. And a success or failure. And this mom's uptight. That's her barely coping. All her worries. Thousand pages. Breathing down your neck. Day by day. Reporters baffled. Trump weather crops. Look at climate change. Fine. Then uh oh. Overflow. Operation. I don't know. But they know. Save herself. Preserve herself. World seems just crazy. Stace and Jesus save me. Oceans full of plastic, the resurgent right, right. You have a trolley out, patriotic slam, fight, fruit pies, feeling pretty psyched. It's the end of the world as we know it, and she's baking pies. Welcome. This is Read More, a weekly update from uh, your local librarian just talking about books, encouraging you to read, keep reading. You got to make time to read and give you some ideas of different things that uh, I'm looking at. Hear from you what books you're reading right now, what books you're putting on hold through the library, what books you're interested in coming out later this summer, and uh, just uh, I really just want to talk books. So first up, you know, like a lot of folks, there's a, been a huge movement to uh, read black authors, uh, new, new voices in American writing, who gets included in discussions. And I think there was a lot of hard questions of people in communities across the country. Um, I, I think especially for a lot of white people, uh, they, they really don't read enough uh, minority voices, uh, people of color, um, just black authors, self-included. If, if nothing else, reading is about reflection, right? So when you reflect, um, you may find things to praise and, and uh, celebrate and to acknowledge. But you also find things that come up short, right? You, you, there's critique, and that's not to say you introduce negativity, etc. Um, but you, you know that things are lacking, and uh, if you have time in the future, you can make plans and you can try to make things right. Uh, whether we're talking about your reading, your learning, uh, your attitudes, and so on and so forth. Uh, I started with uh, a classic, Richard Wright's. Black Boy, very famous autobiography I had not read, had always meant to. Uh, I still haven't read Native Son by him. You know, I'm not even all the way through it. And when I read memoirs, I'm always struck by, uh, again, kind of circling back to uh, the idea of reflection. Uh, you know, everyone has different things they talk about from their childhood, uh, things that were hard or uh, different challenges you faced. And, and then you read other people's memoirs and biographies and you really realize just how privileged you are uh, how lucky you've had it um maybe the the people and the things that have helped you along the way and definitely reading uh richard wright his upcoming in the rural south as a, a poor black child um, his father left his family when he was very young uh, his mother suffered a stroke when he was just a few years older. Uh, his brother and himself were basically shuttled from house to house to house among family members. Uh, very disrupted, uh, fragmented kind of childhood um, that uh, you really have to take stock when you read stories like this. People that still have childhoods uh, like that and why, uh, where, who are they, where are they um, versus, you know, who you might be. Uh, a lot a lot to think about not the done yet but really excited always got to have a classic in the reading pile you know if you read nothing else but new books that's great but you know try to pick up quote unquote a classic and richard wright uh, such a powerful voice with the movement towards self-education especially for uh white folks in america 
Um, I don't think it's controversial to say uh, in high school, junior high, even college, depending on what you choose to study. Uh, history of slavery in this country is really just glossed over. Uh, I don't think that's controversial to say. That's not a controversial statement. We, we don't spend enough time reviewing this stuff, really pulling it apart. And, and taking a look at it. So I kind of took a look at that in my own education and I had had this particular book uh, laying around for a while. Roll Jordan Roll, The World the Slaves Made by Eugene Genovese. Uh, interesting fact about Eugene, he was a Marxist in his younger years when he wrote this. Uh, later on in life, he uh, became very conservative, uh, very conservative Catholic. Not gonna comment on that, just putting it out there for everyone's edification. Um, wherever they want to take that. So with Roll Jordan Roll, um, I'm not convinced it was the best book for me to pick up learning about um, the world of slavery, only because it's very, very dry. Um, the library does own a copy. You should put a hold on it. Packed full of information. It's, it's a lot of data. Um, it's a, there's also anecdotes. Um, he chooses not to, and he's very explicit about it, not focusing on atrocities, not because he don't, doesn't think that they were real, but um, a theme in the book is how slaves fought back, uh, worked for their own humanity under uh, these conditions of, of slavery. It takes almost an optimistic tone of how, um, in the worst kind of circumstances imaginable, uh, different communities and individuals um, refound re their humanity uh, under subjugation. So that is a uh, Roll Jordan Roll. What I was reading from in the uh, intro was from a uh, Goodreads reviewer named March Payne. So thanks to you, March Payne, uh, for your uh, great rendition of It's the End of the World and, and uh, It's the End of the World as We Know It by R.E.M. Uh, it's the winner of the 2019 Goldsmiths Prize shortlisted for the 2019 Booker Prize, a New Yorker Best Book of 2019, a New York Times Notable Book of 2019, a Time Must Read Book of 2019. You know, as a librarian, of course you look at who wins awards, uh, but at the end of the day, as a reader, does that excite you? Um, maybe I'll look at a book if I heard that it uh, won an award, Will that be the final reason I actually uh, pick it up and choose to read it? No. Ducks Newburyport. What, what to say about this book? A lot of people are not going to like this book. That's okay because not a lot of people are going to read it either. The thing to know about this book is it's one sentence long. It is, oh, almost a thousand pages. Lucy Elman. Ducks Newburyport. You know, I'm not uh, maybe the most literary person, but there is kind of an understanding today. There's no more big books, right? David Foster Wallace wrote Infinite Jest in the 90s. Jonathan Franzen's still doing his thing. The big American novel is kind of a project I'm not so sure a lot of people pursue anymore. Someone tell that to Lucy Elman. The fact that Madeline's are little, like little memory sticks, but when you bite into one, you get closure. The fact that all her life, the mountain lion has been alone and free and unnamed, and now she has a name and she's not free anymore, and that's sort of spooky. Or is it just the thought of the way she lived before? So alone and hidden from the world, that spooks me. The fact that I'm pretty alone, hidden from the world myself a lot of the time. But not the way a mountain lion. The fact that I think it'd be great if the right to bear arms turned out to be about wearing short sleeves. The right to bear arms, or else maybe they meant heraldry. Like the right to a family crest. The fact that you get to have a pennant with a lion rampant or dormant on it. Armorial, armed conflict, Ben's book on heraldry. Dormant, torpor. The fact that it would be really nice to see all these gun nuts just settle down, design their own coat of arms, and get some plaques made. The fact that maybe they could have their own tartan too. Get a whole Scottish thing going, a family clan, kilt, sorties, the fact that I wouldn't even mind bagpipes if they just quit talking about the Second Amendment for a while and stopped killing people too. Just an excerpt. You ever have racing thoughts? She made a book out of racing thoughts. And it'll definitely make you think about how you read and how you think. 
three books. Check them out, put them on hold. Let me know what you're reading now in the time of COVID. Shh, read more.